yeah, I just um, out here trying to teach you guys about how to uh, just to prepare and how the old people cook their kangaroo tails in the ground. We need a lot of thick wood so we can create ashes for the tails. So as we're waiting for the fire to die to die down with just yeah that'd probably be enough wood now to uh, cook three tails after that I'll make a thing that's called a burner in the ground next to it and then we'll take the ashes cover the first we've got to singe the tails and then we'll cover it over put it in the burner then cover it over with the ashes should take up to 20, 25 minutes. Depending Might not even that, depending on yeah, how, hot, how hot it is, and yeah, then it'll be all good. <laughs> Wrap them around. Make sure you put it on a tight grip, like you're gripping the kangaroo tail. So when we cook the tails, when we get them out, we'll lay them on here. We'll lay them on here and just let them cool off for a little while. And um, yeah, unwrap them. And uh, yeah, but what we like to um, call this thing is uh, like a buttercup, so we can just get it out, put it straight on there, let it cool down. If it's still a bit warm, we'll grab the whole thing, put it on the car, and cut the meat up. Hi, uh, my name is Caleb Forrest. Uh, my uh, my ancestors are from this land. They they used to come back and forth uh, between here, searching for waters and all that. Uh, the importance of uh, cooking your feed in the ground for me would be about uh, mem mem no, remembering our ancestors, remembering how my father taught me how to do it. And it's a good thing. We see, I used to, I used to hate bush. It used to take me everywhere. I used to hate it as a kid. But when I grew up, when I matured, I found that I, I loved it. And uh, it, it was like that ever since. And uh, the only reason why I'm a ranger is to protect this land from, because we used to have a lot of uh, animals out here. I remember. When my father used to take it out, we used to be packed with the roos. Oh, okay. And uh, sadly, it, there's hardly any left. So I don't know if it's for drought or waffle grass or whatever, it's mining. But uh, my hope is for, we'll raise right awareness for this so that we can have it for the next generations. So these are all part of our learning as growing up. Um, the, um, as Jones is explaining how he does his kangaroo tail with the sand on there, I'll do mine just with the coal so I wouldn't put the sand on. But we're, we're out here with the rangers so we let them do it the way they're doing it and um, I'll sit back and still enjoy it and uh, I'm looking forward to tasting it. No doubt. Thank you for sharing it because yeah. it gives me something that I can now share with my yeah. daughter and my family. Um, on how we do yeah. things. Oh yeah, don't make this the only trip. Always come back and go out here and see Greg and them again and have a look around the country and come out and bring your spit with you and we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll cook up a, a bullock out here or something. Yeah. <laughs>
Thanks, Jonesy. That that was um, you know fantastic, and you know as part of a city culture um, that's lost a lot of connection, and to the privilege that we've all had this uh, last few days to see how you are so connected to country and the experiences we can take back and share with people and uh, family and friends and the, the similarities that, you know, passing from one generation to the next is a universal thing, but to uh, uh, see it here in the moment um, when, you know, normally we're disconnected and so removed from it, it really brings it to the fore. And uh, thank you very much. And behalf of the team, we appreciate it. So thank you.